down this place. It's a truckle load of oil. It's a burning near the highway. So the Dutch was good. Welcome to Art Slice, short, a snack size serving of art history. I'm Stephanie Duenas. And I'm Russell Shoemaker. Stephanie. Hey. Listeners, we're sorry. We are we sorry. Fu- we fucked up. We fucked up. I'm coming in strong, but I'm bleeping these. We fucked up. Well, we got fucked. No, we got fucked and we lost our recording and we're sorry. And it's taken time to rebuild. We had to get a new computer. There was also some life stuff, just general life things that happened as well. Pretty crazy week. I'm sure you all understand, but we're sorry. And we're here. We're here with a short episode for you while we re-record. It's actually something that we wanted to keep in part two of The Three Witches, but unfortunately did not make the cut. There just wasn't enough time. But now we do have time. So we wanted it to be a short at some point, right? Yeah, Yeah. for sure. But we're just, we're doing it now. (laughs) All right, well, without... Any further ado, let's get into it. Listeners, uh, we uh, cover a lot of images today, so we will be featuring them on artslicepod.com, or you can see a few of them, a fraction of them, on our Instagram at artslicepod. All right, Steph, so about all this tarot, what are we doing with it? I got it here. I got four tarots. Uh, I don't All know. All varying sizes. I don't know what you're doing with that kind of tarot, but that's not what I'm talking about. Okay. Tarot with the T at the end. Okay. So not the, not tarot. Tarot cards, not tarot roots. Okay. Okay. You're creative. You'll, you'll come up with something. Yeah, no, I'm sure. It'll be fine. All right. I just have to expect tarot in my dinner. Yeah. Well, I th- I know you like those dried Vietnamese fruit and vegetable snacks, and they I have a sure lot of taro do. in them. So I thought, okay, never mind. It doesn't matter. Let's go. Oh, let's just go on. Anyway, taro was originally a playing card game in China that eventually made its way to Italy. Uh, but basically, it evolved into the modern tarot deck. And just to preface, listeners, we're by no means tarot experts. In fact, I would say we're maybe tarot dummies. But when we were researching for the Three Witches episode, we discovered that Lenora Carrington and Remedios Faro both either had tarot cards or put tarot imagery into their work or both. They were inspired by tarot yeah. in some form or another. Which led us to research further into artists who were making tarot decks. Right. So we are doing our best. <laughs> so, so no hate mail. The standard modern tarot deck consists of 78 cards divided into two groups. The major arcana, which has 22 cards, and the minor arcana, which has 56 cards. Stephanie, are you going to read my tarot cards? Is that... I'm not going to read your tarot cards. Okay. I don't know how to do that. Is that what have you, you ever Have you ever had your tarot cards read? Yes. I remember being kind of scared to know. Scared to know. Scared to know the truth, I guess. What about you, Russell? Yes, I have. I've had my tarot cards <laughs> read. Sorry. Yeah, um, I, I find it very relaxing. <laughs> okay. And I, I enjoyed learning about what the cards meant because I would always pull ones that seemed very uh, like I was going to die the next day. That was relaxing to you? Well, once you hear how they're interpreted, it's kind of relaxing. So you draw the death card and you freak out until they explain to you what it means. But it's upside down. So, oops, might be bad. The adaptation of tarot to occult and fortune telling first occurred in France in about the 18th century, leading to a lot of custom decks for occult uses like fortune telling and tarot card reading. Right. So like baguette tarot cards. Tarot cards made on baguettes. (laughs) A spread of tarot cards on baguettes. Yep. That's hilarious. Yep. That does not sound edible, though. Um, No, it's not meant to be. It's meant to offer you guidance. Okay. For you, interesting. It. Yeah. All right. Oh, cool. You get a little side of knowledge yep. or wisdom, I guess. Yep. Cool. Right next to the butter. <laughs> There's the bowl of tarot cards. Yep. Okay. Love it. All right. The cards of the major arcana have have pictures representing various forces, characters, virtues, and vices. And most tarot decks I've seen are beautifully illustrated. Tarot card reading helps you gain insight into the past, the present, or the future by coming up with a question, then drawing and interpreting the cards. The tarots of the major arcana are, one, the juggler or the magician, high priestess, three, empress, four, 
Emperor. Five, Pope. Six. Lovers. Seven. Eight. Chariot. Justice. Nine. Ten, hermit. Wheel of Fortune. Eleven. Strength or fortitude. Twelve, hanged 13, man. Fourteen. Death, temperance. Fifteen. Devil. Sixteen. Lightning struck tower. Star, Eighteen. Nineteen. Moon. Sun. Twenty. Last 21, judgment. World or universe. And then we have the fool, the 22nd card, but it is not numbered. The minor arcana mainly has to do with business matters, career ambitions, conflict, money, and material comfort. So, like, if I want to find my duvet, I ask the the tarot cards where my duvet is. Sure. If I want to be comforted in my comforter. I don't see why not. Okay. The tarot deck is shuffled by the questioner. And then the tarot card reader lays out a few of the cards, uh, which were either selected at random by the questioner or dealt off the top of the shuffle deck. They always told me to pick the ones that I felt like I was supposed to pick. Yeah, like it, it's intuitive. It yeah, could be yeah, intuitive. Yeah. yeah. So then those cards are laid out in a special pattern called a spread. Mm. So the meaning of any card depends on whether it's upside down, its position in the spread, and the meaning of the adjacent cards. Or if there's a hole burned into it from a sudden flame. Sure. It's really complicated when that happens. So tarot can mean a lot of different things to different people. It can be more of a guide or fortune telling or maybe self-help for others. Like I said, I always found it relaxing. I felt like it was kind of a a form of uh, pseudoscience Mm. that lent some wisdom for me to learn from for that week. Moving along. Our girl, LC. All right. Lenora Carrington. Yes, thank you. It was well known that Elsie made paintings based on imagery from tarot cards. Right. But a few years ago, it was discovered that she had done a whole suite of small paintings based on the major arcana. Man, she was just real busy in Mexico City, huh? She was extremely prolific. Pretty easy to be prolific, though, when you have a bunch of hyenas doing your bidding. (laughs) They're raising the kids. Yeah, they're they're going out shopping. They're, like, stepping on each other's backs to get the the ketchup that's on the top shelf. You think Lenora Carrington had ketchup in her top shelf? Yeah, why wouldn't she? She's from Britain. Is that a British thing? I guess. I don't know. I've never been there. All right. Okay, so... These paintings will be published in a new book called The Tarot of Lenora Carrington by Fulger Press to be released very, very soon. Did you say The Terror of Lenora Carrington? Is that what I said? Yeah. The Tarot. Oh, okay. So while the occult may be very trendy right now, for LC, it was very serious for her. She she was very serious in studying it, and it wasn't just a means of fortune telling for her, but rather a guiding principle on a much higher plane. She wasn't on our level. Yeah, she was on uh, another level ever since she was a little girl. So I just want to talk about a couple of the cards from that major arcana of hers. <laughs> yeah. So Russell's laughing at the, um, the image of the fool. His butt is out. That is the shortest miniskirt I've ever seen in my life. What would you do if I wore that miniskirt stuff? And that dog oh. is uh, that dog is enjoying. That looks like a cat. So the fool represents new beginnings, having faith in the future. Having your butt out. Being inexperienced. Sun's out, buns out. Not knowing what to expect. Having beginner's luck, improvisation, and believing in the universe. So you could also say kind of naivete. So this this fool here, <laughs> this fool, <laughs> uh, he's kind of looking up at the sky, kind of something's catching his attention, and he just does not even realize that there's this rabid animal just biting his leg. This is like when Donald Trump stared directly at the solar eclipse eclipse without sunglasses. Yeah. But he had pants on, fortunately. Uh, Let's describe this image a little bit. So the background is like a teal color, and the rest of it is just it's small white marks. Do we know what this was painted on? I don't know. I guess you're the fool. Thank you. (laughs) Thank you so much. (laughs) It kind of look it reminds me of like a ceramic tile. All right, so the sun is the next image. This card represents good fortune, happiness, joy, harmony, all the good things, and the universe coming together and agreeing with your path and aiding forward movement into something greater. I would like to know what the sun feels like. <laughs> Just kidding. It's not Once like, again, woe is me. Yeah, no, I agree. Sorry, I didn't mean to not hear that. The character is butt naked on on a horse. She's naked on a white horse. Naked on a horse. Actually sounds very exhilarating. It sounds painful. Depends how smooth the horse is. Have you ever been on a horse? I have as a child. You've ridden on a horse. It was terrifying. You've ridden on a horse. Yeah, I think it was like four or five. The most horrifying thing I've ever experienced in my life. All I saw was like the world around me going (laughs) like that. Like 
<laughs> Sorry, what was Jostling, that again? Like, I can't do that? that again. Okay, so this image is on gold leaf. So it looks like she laid down some gold leaf. So it's going to be metallic. It's a metallic surface. And then she's to use, I want to say gouache. It's not like it doesn't look like a pen. It doesn't look like a paintbrush. It could be a lot of things. Right. So we have the white horse, the white woman. <laughs> On the white horse, there's like a red banner. She's got a Lisa Simpson haircut. Yeah, she sure does. I don't think that's the wind at all. I don't think that's the wind in her hair. I think it's the Lisa Simpson haircut. She rode in naked to the barberette. She's like, give me the Lisa Simpson. I got places to go. I got sunshine to observe. Absorb. (laughs) Don't observe the sunshine. (laughs) Um, Don't be like the fool, my friend the fool. (laughs) Okay, moving on to another customized tarot deck. Um, one of your favorite artists, Russell, Surrealist, Salvador Dali. These aren't bad. I like them. So originally, this whole tarot project for him began when he was commissioned to design a tarot deck. Oh, for a stupid face. He was commissioned to design a tarot deck for the James Bond movie, Live or Let Die, huh. in the early 70s. Interesting. Um, it fell through. Most of the designs for the, the tarot cards are collages of historic artworks, including Bernini statue of the blessed Ludovica Albertoni, Hilliard's Young Man Among Roses, Camuccini's Death of Julius Caesar, among others. Actually, I really like the death card. Death card's very interesting. I like their perspective. I like the skull. I like like the the cypress tree. Yeah, the cypress tree. It's very kooky. That one almost reminds me of Loteria. Yeah, a little bit, right? The skull and the rose. Yeah, like, I don't know if just because it's the skull and rose, but I got some Loteria vibes over there. Mm. Yeah. So another Surrealist tarot deck. Are you ready? We're just stuck in the Surrealism. I know. Get over it is what you're thinking, listeners. And we will. Trust me. I, you know what? I just have a soft spot in my heart for modern art now. And that includes the Surrealism, I guess. I don't know. Okay, fair I'm just rambling. Anyway. All right. So next up, 1940, Andre Breton. If you recall, he was a leader of the Surrealist movement. How do you think they voted for him? I think like one person's like putting down a lobster, another person cuts off a lock of his hair and puts it down. The other person gives him an empty glass that has a soul in it, just has a sticky note on it that says soul and (laughs) puts that in in the voting pile. I don't know. They're very strange, the Surrealists, so I have no idea. Okay. Anyway, him and some other Surrealists decided to design a new deck of tarot cards called the Jeu de Marseille. For him, it wasn't enough to just redecorate an existing pack of cards. He wanted to completely reinvent them. Oh, those surrealists trying to trying to reinvent the wheel Brazen. with their melting like Brazen. dream bosom wheels. So the group of surrealists that were included in designing this were obviously Bertone, but Max Ernst, Jacqueline Lamba, Oscar Dominguez, Victor Browner, just to name a few. They were stranded in the French port of Marseille, along with many other artists, writers, and intellectuals attempting to escape Nazi-occupied Europe. Does this sound familiar? Um, So among this group of people that were waiting for the ship to take them away to safety was Remedios Varro and her husband, Benjamin Perret. They were part of this group. Breton was a socialist, and he did not appreciate the fact that there was a royal hierarchy of king and queen ruling over a humble jack in the in the tarot deck. <laughs> so he renamed them Genius, Siren, and Magus. Those are people names. Old old Magus over there. <laughs> she owns a uh she owns an egg farm. Kind of cooler than than names I've heard recently. Yeah. So not bad, not bad. Now stuff, these look just like playing cards. These look like a regular old de- I mean a kooky deck of playing cards. Well, that may have been the aesthetic they were going for. I dig these. These are cool. Why? What about it? Slash, can you describe them to the listener a little bit? Okay, so they remind me of like tattoo flash art. V- like they look like they'd look great on an arm. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 like they're yeah. complicated but not too complicated. They have big areas of very simple shapes. But they're still like a very complicated image. They also look like like the deck of cards that would be in Twin Peaks or something. Like they're very strange. Like, it's like, it's <laughs> Are they like, surreal? Like, they're surreal. Yeah, it's like <laughs> <laughs> it's like the deck of cards took a took a tab of acid or something. You know what oh, I mean? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Like so they're a little all bit psychedelic, and skewed and psychedelic, and cool. And then there's just I don't know what that one is, but it's just like it looks like an orange that just has it's blood around it. Oh, that's a wheel. Okay. Oh, it's like a Dharma oh, wheel. I think almost. it's a wheel. Yeah. 
And then there's just like this weird insignia. So they do mirror one another like most card decks do. So the, the top and the bottom kind of mirror, like if you think of the king and the queen, how they mirror on the bottom. Am I making any sense? Yeah, on one card, there yeah. is a mirrored image. So the queen, the, right. there's an image of the queen at the top of the card. And then on the bottom half, she's right. reflected. So most of the cards look like that, but then some of them break with that form and, and are just a single image on, in the center of the card deck. But it looks more like a card deck, like your typical card deck. So let's talk about a few contemporary examples of uh, tarot card reinventions. We are going to talk about Yoshitaka Amano, who is a Japanese artist, character designer, illustrator, and costume designer. So he's known for working on the anime adaptation of Speed Racer in the 1960s. Go Speed Racer. You know it? Yeah. Uh, so I used to get the VHSs from Big Lots when I was a kid. Oh, They were very good. Wait, what? The quality or just the Speed Racer? Uh, I don't remember the animation quality being that stellar. I, could, I mean, it's been a long ass time since I watched it. but Okay. Well, it was from the 60s. Um, he's also known for his illustrations for the video game franchise Final Fantasy. Since the 90s, he's been making paintings, primarily painting on aluminum box panels with acrylic and automotive paint. Oh, very cool. I love automotive paint. Really? Yeah. Why? It's very reflective. Ooh. It's fun to work with. It's silky. Is it like smelly? Gives okay. you a, gives you a headache. Um so his influences include early western comic books, Art Nouveau, and Japanese woodblock prints. So his illustrations for the for the tarot cards came out in 1992. I really like his style. I think it's like a, it's like a mixture of fantasy mm-hmm. and like this got this ethereal quality to it, but it's also kind of like fashion sketchy. It has an, a bit of an anime feeling For to sure. it, but not not so much that it screams anime. But it also kind of looks like if you've ever watched the original Eon Flux, once again, they're more psychedelic. They're more, they're very weird. Like what that Wheel of Fortune image is is crazy. It's crazy. It's like a, it's like a, what are those? Spinny spin art. I think it's called like spin art or something. I, I don't know. Never heard of it. This toy would spin your piece of paper round and round and round and then you just like drop paint on it. And it's like in these little squeeze tubes. Anyway, it looks like that. Cool. That yeah, sounds, it's cool. That it's sounds cool pretty thing. cool. Yeah, I'll have to have a look at that. Um, There's also absolutely an Art Nouveau quality oh, to it for sure. as well. Yeah. So Art Nouveau has... Uh, more of an organic, or- organic shapes, yep. lines. I'm more of a fan of the ones that take up the whole, almost the whole image. I think just the composition is unusual. Like if you look at Justice, that is a well balanced composition. But Wheel of Fortune, the Hermit, the Chariot, Strength, Temperance. These are just the ones I, I'm seeing in front of me. They use the composition in very different ways. It makes it more ethereal, more odd. Makes you want to stare at it longer, figure out what's going on. So our next artist is Suzanne Trister. She is a British artist, and she has been working in a variety of mediums since the 1980s. Her work is very dense, but fascinating. So these are crazy. Yeah, <laughs> like, I don't know where to start. <laughs> these are not the so this they're fully loaded cards. Okay. Every part of the composition is being used. For me, at first, I'm like, this is like when you're on the phone and you're like mad sketching yeah. or doodling, and then you just like rent. But she there's an order. There's a total order to there, them. There is, and they do remind me of like 60s psychedelic posters, like Japanese psychedelic posters, Tadanori. Yoku, I think I'm saying that right. I don't think I'm familiar. Oh, he, he's so cool. What were the posters about? Um, hard to tell. Oh, really? <laughs> a lot of different things. A well, kind of like things. this. You look at it, and you're just they're like these portraits exactly. of people. But I've never heard of these people. Uh, so the fool is Huxley, the writer Huxley. There's like just some words, like stuff that you would find in his novels. Got to get in there. You've got to have good eyes. I mean, actually, not even good eyes. You have to have a magnifying glass. Yeah. So the one that really catches my eye is the moon. Why? It's nice. There's a little less going on, maybe. A little less going on. It says transhumanism, which is interesting. And there's lots of like it says post genderism, futurology, techno uto cryonics, mind uploading, libertarian transhumanism by something I can't read that biotechnology. Immortalism. A lot of words I've not heard of. Interesting. It's all hand-drawn, mixed with these like very 
old school looking illustrated clouds. Like they could be in a, a 16th century like French print, you mm, know, mm-hmm. very interesting mix. These are like corporate buzzwords. You don't know what they mean, but you know something, something fucked up is about to happen. Someone comes in and is like, it's time to reach our uh, transhumanism crowd through uh, uh, a cloning endeavor using techno giantism. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Everyone's like, fuck, we're, getting, we're losing our jobs. Oh, just thinking about that would it. be the next step of like a corporation, though, to like upload your brain to their server so that you didn't, they didn't have to pay you. That is fucking depressing. <laughs> Why would you say that? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> All right, back to Remedios Varro. Who should be just the art slice mascot at this point with how many times we've covered her. She's just that good. So while Varro did not design a tarot deck per se, she was certainly inspired by tarot card imagery and its influence is evident in several of her paintings. Yeah, that makes so much more sense now. It kind of clicks, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. But there's like, there's moons, there's towers, there's like weird creatures. I could totally see it. But without knowing Tara, I'm, I would just think, oh, that's witchy. Yeah, exactly. Witchy things. Exactly. But guess what? Actually, all those elements are in tarot. Okay, so here are some of the paintings that you might find some tarot references in. The Juggler, The Hermit, The Lovers, and then there are just several towers in so many of her paintings. There's also my favorite, The Moon. Uh, well, I don't know if it's a moon. It's like this orb thing, but it reflects in the water a crescent moon. Actually, a lot of the pieces, they're the same rough shape of a tarot card. Right. They're not widescreen. Mm-hmm. They're, they're por- well, what we would call portrait. They're but a little more exaggerated. Even more exaggerated. Yeah. yeah they're almost like tapestry sized. <laughs> the Hermit's really interesting. It's one of my, another one of my favorites by Varro. I love the way she handles the tree moss, I guess. I don't, I don't know if that's Lichen. Moss. The lichen. Uh, and then the Hermit is this like weird star creature with a hallway that is opening up within its chest. And then there is a yin and yang logo. Love it. First of all, I I like that the figure's androgynous. Mm -hmm. But then I really love how she made... Is it the... There's like a a sparkly aura around the figure, and but it almost looks like it's an iridescent fabric. So the lovers... That painting by Varro directly inspired Madonna in her Bedtime Stories video okay. from 1984. All right. Which also features inspiration by LC and other female surrealists. Well, I sure hope that Madonna is doing the right thing and donating that money, the millions of dollars she made from that video, to a worthy cause for stealing from those artists. She might have. I don't know. She uh, <laughs> She's a material girl, so... Well... <laughs> This video is now considered a work of art as the MoMA owns it now. Well, then the, Mo- the MoMA should be donating money to lots of good causes. Never no, no. On. You go on. You they're go taking on. No, blood go. money go. is you what go. they're doing. Yeah, there, let's not talk about the blood money. That's okay. for a future episode. Okay. There have also been several versions of tarot decks uh, designed in the style of famous artists like Hieronymus Bosch, uh, Andrea Mantegna, Gustav Klimt. Among many others, we will certainly include some of these images, some some of these examples, um, but definitely something to check out. Um, it's a whole other world I was not aware of. All right, Steph, you got a glimmer in your eye. <laughs> so what is the art assignment? I can't imagine what it would be after today's episode. Okay, don't be sarcastic. Of course, it's going to be design your own tarot card. <sighs> yes. See, I was, I was kind of hoping like a left turn there, like a real, like a strong left turn. Okay, no. So listeners, you can either choose an existing tarot card. Choose the lovers. Choose the fool. Choose the devil. Or if none of those speak to you... Make your own. Um, I don't know. The chubby cat. The <laughs> the healthy succulent. I don't know. Sounds like things that you are surrounded by so, yep. in our house yep. that you married into. So listeners, we're excited to see them. As an alternative art assignment, you could send us your best tarot recipe. Is there tarot pie? Oh, it doesn't. No, Doesn't sound good? No, probably not. It's not like rhubarb. Listeners, thank you so much for hanging in there with us. We're so sorry uh, about the mishap last week. Hey, we hope yeah. we hope this makes up for it a little bit. Yeah. So full episode coming next week. Please, listeners, keep reviewing the show. Keep leaving written reviews of the show. It's really cheering us up. And share it with your friends. Share it with your dog. Share it your with your coworkers. family members. Whatever. Share it. Share it. Um, because this is really the only way that 
other people start to listen to the show and enjoy it. And we've already seen a lot of growth just in the last like month and a half. So thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you so much. Because we really, we released this and we're like, oh, probably no one's going to listen to this for like a year and we'll just keep going and have fun with it. But we've been surprised, honestly. Um, in fact, we've already had listeners reach out to us and ask us about if we we're going to have any like t-shirts or anything like that. We decided to make some stickers. So listen, who doesn't love stickers. If you leave a written review, if you share with your friend, um, we will send you a free sticker. So just send us your screenshot of your written review, five-star written review on Apple podcast. Or if you don't have Apple, uh, just leave us a review on a platform or share it with your friend. Send us a screenshot of that along with your address. We will send you one sticker. They're very nice stickers. They're pretty cool. Very nice stickers. Now I'm just saying that. Yeah. We're not going to send them out till probably the end of February. So you have plenty of time to do that. All right. Signing out. Signing. Oh, you're not going to do your, uh, your sign No, because it's a short. Okay. Right? Okay. No? Sure. Yeah. I guess. I, guess. I mean, consistency like breeds listenership. Okay, okay, so. Okay. All right. And no. And no. Your kid could not have painted that. Bye. Bye. Bye.